Yeah, uh, just quickly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Christian Mesh, Open Dover Tech Lead. I've been working on the project for about a year now um, and have some amazing coworkers here in the audience. Just gonna give a quick shout out to Ronnie and RL in the front, front row. Um, yeah, so what I'd like to answer with this today is how do we get here and where are we going? Like what's, how does Open Tofu function? It's not something we've been super clear about and I'll kind of get into why shortly. Um, so again, Chris Mesh, Open Tofu Tech Lead. So where are we coming from? Uh, I'm assuming most of you here have at least heard the term Terraform at some point. Uh, incredibly popular infra infrastructure as code tool, kind of took the world by storm over the past 10 years. And some interesting stuff happened last year. Um, and I'll get into that. So it's a tool to manage your infrastructure. It's built on top of something called the provider API. These are binaries that talk to uh, OpenTofu or Terraform over the gRPC, pro uh, uh, gRPC interface. This is standardized um, that allow you to say, this is how the configuration, this is how I express, this is how my configuration hooks into different services. You can do anything from talking to AWS to create a bucket to ordering pizza from the local place down the street. Uh, you can build a provider for just about anything. Uh, modules, as, as you heard in the last talk, are reusable code pieces. Uh, you don't obviously want to copy and paste between every single service. You want to be able to say, okay, one team defines a module or a variety of teams define modules. There's shared code between different parts of your organization. Um, and there's a fairly crazy number of them uh, that we've had to make sure we can interface with. Um, the Terraform registry is how the open tofu, or is, is, is how Terraform understands where do providers come from, where do modules come from. This will become important in a minute. Uh, and it's worth mentioning HashCorp Cloud was created around and popularized around 2023 um, as a hosted orchestration platform on top of Terraform. Um, and it's an ecosystem of free and paid extensions and orchestrations on top of Terraform. For example, most of the companies here uh, in some way or form in the past supported Terraform and built additional uh, components on top of it. It's this really, it, it, this, it's this ecosystem that really blossomed over the past 10 years and a lot of people invested in it. It's something that means a lot to a lot of people and there's a lot of hours invested in it. Um, unfortunately, we get to this little asterisk up here. Open source, maybe? Open source kind of? When is open source not really open? Well, a lot of organizations that we've seen in the past year or two, uh, honestly, the last five years, have unfortunately used parts of their contributor license agreement against the community. This is a agreement that you have to sign or agree to to contribute to an open source project. And in many cases, you're signing away your rights to what you're producing. Um, it's, it's something that we've been told no, this, this is just to make the lawyers happy. This is just, this is, this is a formality. You don't need to, need to worry about the contributor license agreement. Unfortunately, in a lot of cases, that's not the case. Um, Terraform's one of many projects we've seen over the past five years that use their CLA to relicense their source code away from the true open source core it was built on. Um, and this has been a huge rug pull on multiple communities. And we're, we're just living through that backlash right now. Um, for in the case of Terraform, it switched from MPL 2.0, which is a well-tested license used by a variety of projects around the world, to the business, a, a business-oriented license. Um, and we've seen this through a variety of projects. Um, and it's now visible source. And you might not have heard that term before, and I'll get into why that's a problem. Yeah, the code's still on GitHub, what's the problem? It's when you get into the licensing, you get into some of the ways that people develop code today, it gets really tricky very, very fast. Um, and you might have an open source tool, but to run it, you might have this proprietary service that is theoretically freely licensed, but when it comes down to it, when there's a problem, it is a single point of failure. And to, to be able to fork, to be able to exercise your right as an open source developer, that's a big problem. Um, so the rug, pull, the rug was pulled out from the Terraform community and people were left in the lurch. People were scrambling, what does this mean? The license was changed, I can't use the registry for forks. What's, what's going on here? So the community, it was like, what the heck? We've evangelized, we've built on top of this is, 
they felt ownership of something that they didn't really own. Um, and the, there was a huge amount of trust that was broken. The manifesto was the first reaction to that. The, the Open Tofu manifesto, or the Open TF manifesto, was saying, listen, this piece of infrastructure is bigger than HashCorp. It's bigger than Terraform. This is something that the community depends upon that we want to build on, and we want it to continue to be open. And we realized that forking is the last option. It is, we should try and reconcile before we take that large step. Unfortunately, the manifesto in trying to find a compromise, it, it fell on deaf ears, as far as I'm aware. Uh, we, it's, we weren't really left with much of an option, so we had to invoke our insurance policy, which is forking. Um, it's easy to say, but it's hard to do. Um, and what was preventing a fork? Like you think, okay, I'll go on GitHub, I'll click the button that says create a fork. I might change a few names and a couple files, and suddenly I've got something new. I've opened TF. Well, it depends on what the code base looks like at that time. So what we dealt with is the, we had impl uh, incomplete features in part of the 155 branch on the way to 1.6 that we had to pick up and say, okay, this is partially complete code between releases. How do we finish it? How do we figure out how to get this code in a functional state? The, there's data that's a, that we need to run that, oh, look, they just changed the terms of service on the registry so that any forks cannot use the Terraform and HashCorp registry. This means that you have to rebuild from scratch whole pieces of in infrastructure in order to make a fork viable. It's, it, was, it was the first couple months of OpenTofu. RL, if you have any questions on the registry, he and I worked together and wrote a lot of the code for OpenTofu to build this. It's the index of all the modules and providers. Without it, the tool's useless. So we have to, it's, we're starting to build this laundry list of things that need to be done before any sort of new development can happen. Build tools might be unavailable or just undocumented. We had to build a whole new release pipeline and integrate that with all of our existing tooling. Um, it's unclear what repositories should be forked. How do you know where the barrier is between what you're working on and other upstream projects that might be owned by, for in our case, HashiCorp, HCL? This is the language that both OpenTofu and Terraform are built on. How do we fix bugs in it? How do we add additional features to it when it's owned by HashiCorp? Do we have to fork that as well? And I'll be honest, I don't have an answer to that. That is a question we ask ourselves every day, and we're trying to figure out how to work with Upstream to reduce the amount of duplicated effort as much as possible while maintaining our, our ability to be open source. Um, it's, uh, you also might run into the situation where the open source documentation is commingled with closed source documentation. We had to go through and rewrite and kind of rebuild the documentation before we could launch anything. So people saw, may have seen the manifesto saying, hey, we're gonna do this open tofu thing, or the open TF thing at the time. And you're like, well, why did it take three months to get a release out that was just the same stuff Terraform just, just did? Well, this is why. All of this technical debt, all of these things that are undocumented and just unavailable need to be figured out before anything can actually be launched. And this, this, was, this was a pretty mad scramble. Um, and the historical knowledge is missing. So RL, Ronnie, and myself, we hopped onto the project saying, okay, this is a brand new code base to us, and how do we, how do we get that knowledge? This 10 years of development, how do we jump into that process and start making substantive changes without completely breaking the source code? And that gets into learning about the testing framework, learning about what coverage exists and what doesn't. It's a fairly large undertaking. Um, so we said OpenTF, the manifesto was out, what steps were taken? So the most immediately impacted individuals and organizations were the tacos. A lot of the companies on my shirt here and around the, the convention, um, infrastructure automation and orchestration companies, HashiCorp is competing with them and this, this change threatens the core of their business. And all of the customers are like, well, what do we do now? We can't run new versions of the software that we've invested hundreds if not thousands of man hours into. What do we do? Um, interestingly enough, all these companies are competing with each other. And they're all on my shirt here today, which is, I think, which says quite a lot. And this is where the title of my talk really comes into play. This is the mutually assured development. They have to work together or they they, fa they, 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 they succeed together or they fail together. It's a very interesting situation to be in. Um, they realized very early on that an open ecosystem and tooling is required for these, co these 
companies to continue to function. Um, it's, it was a, it was, so competition was set aside pretty much day of, where all of these lines of communication were open, people hopped on calls and figured out, okay, how do we move forward? This is a critical piece of infrastructure, not for us, but for the whole uh, infrastructure as code community. How do we move forward? How do we prevent this from happening again? Um, and how do, how do we accomplish this? Saying that we need to create an or organization, we need to build open tofu, what does that actually mean? How do you do that and how do you set aside the responsibility so that and any one company can't take over the project? Um, so how do you prevent the rug fall? So we're incredibly grateful that we've partnered with the Linux Foundation, the trademark is owned by the Linux Foundation, the name open tofu is not controlled by any of one of these companies, it is Linux Foundation, the governance who oversees the technical steering committee, who oversees the development, and who has a final say is the Linux Foundation. This is, this is critical. So no one company can go rogue and say, we're going in our own direction, this is what open tofu, we're gonna make our own open tofu that's different. It's, this is all under the foundation. It's impartial oversight. Um, and the inbound licensing is outbound licensing. We don't have a contributor license agreement. We cannot relicense open tofu. Functionally, we'd have to get sign-offs from every single person who's contributed to Open Tofu and all the commits to Terraform before that. So it's always going to be open. It's always going to be easy to fork. This is the promise of Open Tofu. Um, and the multiple contributing companies, there's no one voice that's going to stand out and rule the ecosystem. It is, we're all in this together. And I know I sound like a little bit of a, a hippie, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, and it, it, this is, it's, I've talked a lot about it's been easy to fork, it's, this is open tofu, that's one of its design goals. And we've actually put that into practice. So I had a friend reach out about uh, PowerPC, and we don't have the resources within the main core project to support that architecture, because you need specific build machines and it's, it's a whole thing. But we worked with them to fork and be able to build and run a PowerPC variant of the entire set of infrastructure. This is our commitment saying this is, this is truly open. We are not going to try and make this, we're, we're trying not to make the same mistakes that happened before. So how are we organized? So this is, this is how, how do we function today? This is maybe not be the way we function five years from now, but this is how we function today. The core team, many of which are here today, they develop features, they review contributions, and they support the community. This is, we are the backbone. We want to get whatever the users are saying, whatever the, the community is asking for, we want to make that happen. Either that's developing it ourselves or working with people from the, from the community or companies who are like, this is a feature I want in OpenDofu. It's our job to make that a, a reality, help them through testing, help them through implementation. And it, it's an amazing job. And I'm, I'm happy every day that that's what I get to do. Uh, I'm also the tech lead. I lead the day-to-day -day business, the commu communication with portions of the community. And I interface with the technical steering committee. The TSC sits above the core team and makes decisions that are like long-term strategic, approving the roadmap for what the core team works on and any sort of other legal matters that may come up. Um, it's, 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 an, it's a nice relationship. Um, and over them, the Linux Foundation oversees that. So every single step of the way, it's feeding back into the Linux Foundation that responsibility, that promise that open tofu is truly open. So what, how does open tofu, how do we figure out what's next? What, is, what does open tofu mean to us? It is, a, it is community driven. I don't have a personal agenda for what goes into open tofu. And all the companies here on my sleeve, they don't either. My contract with Spacelift says make open tofu better. That's pretty much it. I am, they don't say work on these features. We have customers that are looking at this particular thing. We want you to work on this. It's no, listen to the community, work on making a healthy and sustainable ecosystem because that's truly what is needed. They have set aside their competition. They have set aside their ego. They have set aside, honestly, a lot of money toward the project and to get this off the ground. They've put their money where their mouth is and it's been an incredible process. Um, let's see. And so on a more practical level, we have 
an RFC process in place. So whenever we're talking about a large feature, whenever we're talking about something that is going to require a lot of discussion, and it shouldn't just be one person or a couple people in the core team figuring out, oh, we need to implement this. It's we have a process designed so on a pull request, the whole community gets to weigh in on exactly what's going on, how the feature is going to be built, how it's going to be used as an end user, and how that's going to impact both individuals and companies alike. It is a open process. It is open discussion. That is our goal. Um, and each company hires their own employees, but the hiring process is standardized. We're looking for people. We're trying to come together and build a solid team that can help build and grow the Open Tofu community. Um, and as I said, the core developers are Open Tofu, tofu first, employees second. One of my favorite jokes to make is, I don't know what Spacelift does. I have them on my shirt, they're on my badge. I have never used Spacelift. I have never talked with them about what features are available within Spacelift. I am working on Open Tofu, and I'm graciously sponsored by Spacelift, who's at, at the back here. Um, but if you ask me about the product, I will tell you to go talk to them, because I don't know. They have set up a firewall where the, de the developers who are hired to work on Open Tofu 100% do not interface with their companies in a way that is any sort of conflict of interest. It's I honestly was kind of shocked when I took this job, and that's what I, I was like, this, this, this can't be true. Like this, they, they, they're investing all this time and effort into me and other developers, but they have consistently, time and time again, Spacelift and everyone else here has said, no, we need a truly open source project. We need a healthy community, and that means getting our fingers out of the pie. That means making it an open project, making it governed by the community. Um, and that's, if you take a look at what's on our top list for what the community has been asking for, the dynamic provider config assignment, that is the top feature for 1.9. The other, which RL worked on, is the exclude flag. We see what's being uploaded on, Git, uh, on, on GitHub and listen to what the community is saying. We pull in as much information as we can, we triage that, we work with them and figure out what is next. So yeah, that's yeah. You tell us what do you want from Open Tofu? How can we improve Open Tofu and work with you to make it a better project that works better for your infrastructure, that works better for your use case? And I I would love to ask everyone here that if you have a feature, if you have a use case that is not currently served by Open Tofu, head on to GitHub, see if there's a conversation ongoing, hop into that conversation. If there's an RFC in process, start talking about your use case. Take a look at the proposed user documentation. Get involved in the process because that is what we're craving. That's what we're looking for. And that's what gets us up in the morning. I, I and many of, of the other developers, we're service oriented. We want to make your dream a reality. Which again, I know it sounds cheesy, but that is what gets me up in the morning. Uh, you can come to the community meetings on Wednesday and you can open and vote on issues. I believe we've got seven minutes left. Oh, sorry, I have one, one last slide, apologies. So what are some ongoing challenges with Open Tofu? I painted a very rosy picture of what Open Tofu is, what it is, what, what the ideal of Open Tofu is. So I mentioned earlier, source available makes forks harder. If you want to contribute to Open Tofu, you cannot use an LLM or any other automated tooling of that nature. Um, because source available means that some tools might read the code, say, oh, it's under a license that permits reading it, but as we get into AI and who, who's actually authoring the code, for, our, for the safety of the project, we cannot accept contributions that come from LLMs or other similar tooling. Um, and it's, there's also people who will take a look at existing PRs into Terraform even ones that were previously under the, the open license and say, oh, I want to port that over to Open Tofu. It's a very difficult process. Uh, we have to, the core team is on the lookout all the time for that. And although people it, have the best intentions about this, it's a very interesting area, legally speaking. Um, and we have processes in place to detect this and to prevent it. But anyone who's forking one of these, uh, any of these open source projects, that has this business license or a similar one needs to be very, very cautious about this. Um, and for legal reasons, I can't talk too much about the specifics of what we have in place, but it's something that is, it's an investment that we have to make that not many other organizations have to. It's, it's an odd place to be. Uh, we also had a cease and desist letter and a DMC takedown notice. That's all published on our blog. We went through what we received, how we responded to it. Um, it's, something that is unfortunate that it happened. Um, it was an incredibly stressful process for all of the developers involved. 
and we spent a lot of time responding in a thorough and comprehensive manner what we developed, how that was similar to previous versions of this code, and how and, and how all of the assumptions made in the letter that was sent to us were effectively un, uh, unsupported. And we are limited in what we can say about that, but we, I just wanted to thank the community for reading through the large documents we put out, analyzing what happened, and putting their faith in us, and really defending us against these, these allegations. So it's a tricky place to be in when you have a developer who says, I'm being attacked on Twitter, I'm being attacked for all, this thing, all these things that I didn't do. It's, it's a really hard place to be. Um, and we're working on opening up our governance. One of the challenges today is we started, for those of you familiar with the, with the book, the, Cath uh, the Cathedral and the Bazaar, we started in this sort of situation where there, we had a set of blessed developers on the core team who were working on the, on the project. We had to put aside user requests, we had to put aside pull requests that people were putting in to focus on the core product to get it to 1.6, uh, to, to, 1 to get a release out the door. So it's, we're tr we started in this method of we need to, we're fighting fires. We're trying to get open tofu functional. We're trying to get it so that people can adopt this and start seeing what it can be. Um, but in the process, we were not, we, did, we could not be as transparent as we want to be as an organization. So one of my biggest jobs as the TSC, and Wojciech will tell you, I'll, I talk his ear off about this frequently, is we need to figure out how to open up our, our, our governance, open up our planning process make it so that it's not just the core team working behind closed doors to put together the roadmap, but to not just listen to the community, but involve them in the process. We're going to be, hopefully, over the next few months, working on bringing that to the community, opening up that discussion, figuring out what's gonna work for, all, for everyone involved. Um, and I, if that's, I think, all I had today. Uh, I'm gonna ask you to line up for questions. We've got about three minutes left. Uh, thank you for your time. Um, while we wait for, uh, for folks to line up for questions, I have a quick one for you. Sure. Um, sorry, I'm getting a little bit of feedback here. Uh, um, earlier, uh, in the opening remarks, I, uh, I, I noted that there's been, um, uh, sorry, in the opening remarks that I made oh, uh, sure. at, at the very beginning, there's been about a, a, a little over 150 uh, developers that have made unique contribu code contributions to the project. Can you elaborate a little bit on kind of the community involvement as far as code goes versus the core team? Sure. So. We uh, get a variety of pull requests day in and day out. Uh, we ask for people to create issues first, but sometimes people send drive-by PRs. Uh, we have a lot of fun going through what people are submitting. It's anything from performance improvements to an odd edge case that someone discovered to, to fixes. It's, um, we welcome contributions from anywhere, um, as long as they are authored by the folks that are uh, working on them. Uh, it is... Uh, Honestly, my goal is to have the core team do less and less development over time and do more and more review work to help, that, help the community get their ideas into code and get them merged and released. So, yes? Thank you so much for your presentation. Really appreciate it. Uh, I have a question about remaining compatible. So Tofu has made a pretty strong commitment to remain compatible with Terraform for at least some time. I'm yeah. sure that comes at the expense of like some new feature development that might break that. Um, do you have any idea when, or way down the road, when that might potentially change? That's an ex excellent question. And part of this gets into what our roadmap looks like. Right now, the community seems to be prioritizing wanting that level of compatibility, and that's a conversation we're gonna continue to have. Uh, we do have the 1.0 compatibility promise, as does Terraform, uh, as it was in the doc docs that we forked, uh, that as of 1.0, any language features that existed then will continue to function in perpetuity for the 1.0 series. So there will always be some subset that works between what, uh, Terraform 1.0 and OpenTOEFL 1.0, and we're committed to keeping that functional. And that's what 99% of developers use day in and day out. There are cool new features that we hope people try, but at the end of the day, the majority of the feature set is universal across both. And we continue to have that conversation with the community on the day-to-day -day basis to see what needs to be pulled, what, what ideas need to be functional in both. Thank you so much. Of course. All right. 
Hey, thanks so much for actually doing the whole fork thing. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Um, one of the problems that I've been having with my company is that there's a lot of weight behind the HashiCorp name and there's a lot of momentum there. And without kind of going into the whole, this talk you just gave, um, what would be the best way to explain to higher up stakeholders that we should make the switch? Because uh, I'm having trouble persuading them um, and a lot of this, there's a lot of neat features in Tofu I like to try. I think from my point of, point of view, I like to talk about how we're trying to knock out the top requested features from the community. It is something that we are actively working on communicating well. Um, on the other side, I would recommend you take a very close look at what licenses are available for both projects and what risks or advantages they may have. Um, again, I, I, I primarily focus on the take a look at what's on the open Terraform roadmap, how we're building the features. We've added security features that users have asked for for years that Terraform seems to not care about as much. Um, and again, the, the license is something that I can't weigh in on directly, but is has been a persuasive argument for others. All right, thank you. Of course. All right, thank you. Christian, thank you so much.